how often do you actually believe a salesperson? Probably not very much if you're like me. You know, salespeople, they're not all slimy, they're not all bad, they're not all lying. Regardless of their ethical nature or not, uh, salespeople have a stake. This includes salespeople who are selling jobs. And, and whoever an interviewer is in a job, they're selling something, they're selling opportunity. You could work for a staffing and recruiting firm and you're selling opportunity and you're a salesperson. You could be an HR manager and you're a salesperson even though you're vetting that person for that job. You could be a hiring manager and you're still a salesperson because you're trying to get the best person sold on your opportunity. Here's something that's so important to remember about selling. People always believe themselves, but they rarely, if ever, believe somebody who's selling something. And if you check your own experience on that one, you know it's true. This is human nature. Almost all of us has, have been sold a bill of goods, so to speak, at some point in time. So that's why this video, I think, is so important, because most people who interview or hire, they're not natural born salespeople. You can let your jobs sell themselves. You don't have to be, be a great salesperson if you actually follow a simple process. And that's what I want to give you right now. A really simple two-step process for letting your jobs sell themselves. Step one is ask an engaging question. Step two, integrate the response into your follow-up. And I'm going to give you some of those engaging questions. In fact, I'm going to give you three, three of my favorites. Because this way you don't do what I call the verbal vomit. And the verbal vomit is where you vomit information all over the person hoping they like some of it. Now this is an editorial cartoon I, I designed to help illustrate this idea. And this is a salesperson doing this. But this is what it feels like. It feels like somebody's vomiting words all over you when they're trying to sell you on an idea. I've got a better idea. Let's let them sell themselves, and that's where these two steps come in. So I promised you three really engaging questions. The first question is, what would make you happier? You know, anytime you talk to somebody, and let's say you're doing some networking and you're exploring opportunities with them, and they say, I'm happy. A lot of interviewers or a lot of networkers, they don't know what to do with that. You know what? There's always a place called happier. And they'll believe that it's true if they say it. So if you ask somebody what would make you happier and they start talking about that, what they say is completely believable to them and they may just buy into the idea while you're listening how you might be able to make them happier. That's engaging question number one. Engaging question number two is under what circumstances, dot, 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 let me fill in the dots. Under what circumstances would you consider making a change? Under what circumstances would you look for a different employer? Under what circumstances would you make a change? This one's useful when networking or talking to people and they say, I'm not really looking, I'm not really interested, that's not for me. I can say, under what circumstances? And lastly, our third question. What objectives would you have if you changed employers? This is for the person who's maybe open to opportunities. If you hear about their objectives, you can then respond to those, talk about those individually. And that's where that second part comes in. I've given you three engaging questions. Now, all you have to do is take whatever they say and integrate it into your next question. So if somebody says, well, what would make me happier is a better opportunity. You could say, what's a better opportunity? And whatever they say next, you ask another question and another question. Same thing with under what circumstances? Under what circumstances would you consider an opportunity? or a different opportunity. They might say, oh, I don't know, something closer to home. Well, how far away do you work from home right now? And so on and so forth. You keep following up, asking more questions, flipping what they say into your next question. That last one, what objectives would you have if you changed employers? Oh, a promotion opportunity. Why is a promotion opportunity important to you? and so on with each question, integrating that response. Before you know it, they're actually talking themselves into possibilities they never knew existed. They believe everything they say because they're always credible and believable. The person selling the job, not so much. This is why you can let your jobs sell themselves. This is a great conversation. They feel completely heard. They're totally engaged and they believe everything they say. 
but you're also listening. You're hearing what they have to say. You can respond then and say, you know, we can do that for you, or we can offer you that because you're heard so generously. This is collaboration at its best, and this is high-level selling. And as an interviewer or a hiring manager or maybe even a recruiter, you may not have thought you're a salesperson, but when you sell your jobs this way, or I should say let them sell themselves this way, you're being a masterful salesperson because you're letting the better closer close. That's the candidate, never you.